The subject of today's video is a disease, a disease with a mortality rate as high as 90%. This terrifying illness has no treatment, no vaccine, and no cure. Save for helping the patient stabilize and provide them with blood transfusions, replacing the severe hemorrhaging caused by the disease. In today's video, we will cover the effects of the Marburg virus, how it is spread, and what can be done to combat this deadly pathogen. The Marburg virus is in the Filoviridae family of viruses, the same family as Ebola. It is an RNA virus that is classified into two variants, Lake Victoria and Raven. However, these two variants present in the same way, and for the purposes of this video, there is no distinction to be made between the two. The disease is spread by infected bodily fluids, such as feces or saliva. It can enter the body through cuts on the skin, or through mucous membranes such as in the eyes or nose. The incubation period can last around one week, during which time the patient is infectious. Symptoms will start fairly benign and common, such as fever, chills and headaches. Vomiting, diarrhea and stomach cramps will soon follow. The truly disturbing symptom, however, is hemorrhaging. As the virus spreads through the body, it triggers the clotting factors in areas where it is not needed. This depletes the body of its ability to create blood clots where needed. It is not at all uncommon to see hemorrhages beneath the skin, or to see blood leak from the eyes, nose, or other orifices. The damage inflicted by the virus can lead to the patient falling into comas or experiencing seizures. The liver and the spleen in particular are susceptible to the virus. Usually, death will follow the onset of symptoms after eight or nine days. Those who do survive will likely retain some dormant strain of the virus. This could later reawaken or be spread via sexual intercourse, meaning even after surviving the disease, a patient must be extremely careful. As mentioned previously, there is no treatment for the virus, save for supportive care. A patient will require blood and platelet transfusions. They will also require their blood pressure to be maintained, and will need rehydration. As of right now, there is no vaccine for the disease, in large part due to the relatively small number of people infected by the disease to date. Even with its incredibly high mortality rate, investment in a vaccine is seen as not particularly viable or cost-effective. Prevention and stopping the spread of the disease is by far the most effective way of dealing with the virus. Contract tracing, isolating the infected, and providing healthcare workers with proper PPE is vital. So too is having access to adequate and clean medical facilities. Chlorine can kill the virus, meaning that ensuring medical facilities are cleaned can help stop the spread of the disease. And of course, education as to how it is spread is important to avoid transmission. The Marburg virus is found in a common carrier of zootonic diseases, that being bats. The Egyptian fruit bat, found in Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, are known to be reservoirs of the virus. The bats are capable of carrying the virus whilst their own autoimmune response prevents it from infecting themselves. However, their bodily waste and fluids will be infected. There are known examples of tourists visiting bat caves and becoming infected with the virus. However, the first known outbreak of the disease was linked to an entirely different species. The vervet monkey was used in all manner of laboratory experiments, however, some infected with Marburg virus ended up in facilities in Marburg and Frankfurt, Germany. These monkeys were likely infected by exposure to the bats before being captured and shipped off to be test subjects. In 1967, at the Bering Werke and Pau Ehrlich Institute, employees working on vaccines became exposed to the virus. All of the infected employees had worked with and handled blood tissues and organs of vervet monkeys. Some infections amongst the staff came from inadvert needle pricks, and one with an accidental cut to a worker's arm being exposed. One person was infected whilst caring for one of the employees at home. In all, 32 people were infected, with 7 dying. Even at around 25% mortality rate, 
Marburg virus proved to be a deadly disease. Yet, in more rural countries without adequate sanitation, the disease could claim even more lives. In 1998, a group of gold miners in Durba, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, were infected by bats within an abandoned mine. There were 154 cases, with 128 deaths, a morbidity rate of 83%. The disease, however, appeared not to spread very far limiting infections to a small rural area. Although the largest outbreak to date was in Angola in the year 2004. This outbreak was notable as it affected larger areas. The origin point of this outbreak was traced to a pediatric ward of a Weech province hospital. A contaminated transfusion machine is understood to have spread the disease leading to 374 cases. 329 people died, a morbidity rate of 88%. Around 16 of the dead were doctors and nurses, which played a part in reducing faith in the medical system. Some in this outbreak kept their loved ones at home, fearful and not trusting what might happen to them if they were isolated. Home-based treatments using unclean syringes proved to be an important route of transmission for the disease. Thankfully, the disease remained fairly localised and did not spread beyond the Weech region. Since the Angolan outbreak, there have been a few isolated outbreaks in Uganda, Guinea and Ghana. In 2023, two relatively large outbreaks in Guinea and Tanzania saw 33 people infected and 16 killed. Where there is an outbreak, a fast response must be put in place. There is, however, a dark turn to this disease that being its use as a potential biological weapon. According to Ken Alabek, a Soviet biological weapons manager who defected to the US, said that the Soviet Union was working on weaponizing the Marburg virus. According to Alabek, the development reached an advanced stage, though he was not able to confirm whether the weapon was finalized. He has indicated in an interview that it was the Soviet Union's goal to use the virus alongside the likes of smallpox, plague and anthrax as a strategical biological weapon. Alabek also detailed how at least one researcher by the name of Nikolai died following accidental exposure to the virus in laboratory settings. Many other countries list the virus as a controlled or select agent. This means there are limits as to which facilities can have access to the pathogen. This in turn also limits how a potential vaccine might be developed for the virus. The Marburg virus is truly one of the more disturbing diseases, and thankfully is quite rare. The way in which the virus causes severe hemorrhaging, and the fact there is no known cure, will for now keep this disease as one of the more terrifying. Thankfully, exposure requires one to be in close proximity to infected bats, something that most people do not tend to experience. Whilst the risk is low, for many in the world, the infection means almost certain death.